Okay, so here's the question. We have a Ferris wheel which is five meters in radius, and it is spinning this way. And there's a rock sitting on the platform. The platform will stay horizontal as it rotates. And the question is, how fast can I spin this Ferris wheel before the rock goes flying off? But what I'm actually asking you is, what is the minimum time period? What is the minimum period, capital T for period? If the Ferris wheel goes faster and faster, the time it takes to do a rotation will get smaller and smaller. So what I'm asking you this time is, what's the minimum period? We're going to assume a few things. We're going to assume that the roller coaster is speeding up really slowly and gradually. Okay, so the question really becomes, where will this thing slip? The only thing keeping it on, of course, is friction. And the only reason it would want to fly off is because the rock has inertia. It's already moving. So let's assume it's moving in a circle slowly enough that it doesn't slip off. As it gradually picks up speed, where is the rock going to want to go flying off? And I think without too much thought, we can figure out that the answer is at one of the two ends. Okay? At the top, it's never going to fly off. It's moving with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the Ferris wheel, so there's no problem. But at the sides, it's going to have to be turning its most, right? At the bottom again, gravity, normal force, no, nothing's going to make it go sideways. It's got inertia. It's going to want to keep on going. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, that the maximum tendency of the rock to fly off is going to be at the sides. Some would call that the maximum centrifugal force would be felt at the sides. If you're on the Ferris wheel, you're going to feel the most force pushing you off at either end. But the physics student knows there's actually no force pushing them out. It's just the rock's inertia making it wind to go that way and some force pushing it in the opposite direction, making it stay with the circular motion. Okay, so something's got to be providing the centripetal force, which is very real, right? Centripetal force is directed towards the center of a circle. It causes things to go in a circular motion. Centrifugal force is a fake force that we feel like something's pushing us out of the circle, but it really is just our bodies trying to go straight, and the whole room that we're in, the frame of reference that we're in, is accelerating around us, and we feel these fake forces. They're fictitious, they're fake to people outside, looking in can see that it's just inertia, but when you're in the room you feel the force. It's very much real. Okay, so we got to draw a free body diagram. The free body diagram has a mass m, and of course it's got a force of gravity, which is fg. There's a normal force, fn. I'm in frame. So the force of gravity is of course mg. The question is, which way is the force of friction? This thing is resting on the Ferris wheel. Is anyone pushing it? No, there's no applied force, there's no rope, there's no tension. So the only force left is friction, and the question is which way is friction? Well, we're drawing the free body diagram with the object here. It's moving in a circle this way. The center of the circle is that way. The only force that could possibly provide the centripetal force is friction. It's got to be towards the center. So centripetal force is, remember, it's like a net force. There has to be some normal everyday force towards the center of the circle and that's going to be equal to Fc. But I'm not going to really write Fc. I'm going to say, okay, x this time is to the left towards the center, y is that way. So in the x direction, we can see that friction is equal to Ma. The only x force is friction, and it's equal to Ma. This thing is going in a circle, so that's Mac, the centripetal acceleration. I'm sort of stuck here until I draw my y direction equation. When I do, I see that Fn minus Fg is going to have to equal to zero. Remember, we're assuming this thing is speeding up gradually, so like imagine going up a tiny bit and staying that way for a whole revolution. Okay, so the acceleration is zero. The thing's not speeding up at this speed. So this is the maximum place. The acceleration is zero. The normal force is going to be equal to gravity, which is, of course, Fg. We don't know the number, but so what? It's called Mg. We can shove that in over here. Ff equals mu. Fn, which equals Mac. Fn is Mg. So mu Mg equals Mac. And hallelujah, the masses cancel out. Then we're left with the question of what's the actual, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find T. We don't have anything in there. We've got to have a formula for A that has a T in it. And there is just such a formula. Mu G equals 4 pi squared r over t squared. That's just a centripetal force, centripetal acceleration formula with a t in it. Rearranging this thing, we can see that t squared 
must be equal to 4 pi squared r over mu g. I almost mistook my mu for an m, can you believe that? And then subbing in, we should get an answer. It looks like it's the root of 900 and some, which turns out to be about 31.4 seconds. If it goes any faster and the time for one rotation becomes less than 31.4, then the centripetal force required to keep this thing going in a circle will be bigger than the frictional force that mu fn can provide for. If the centripetal force required to make it go in a circle is bigger than the force that friction can provide, it's not going to be able to continue going in a circle, and it's going to appear to slip, because the platform is, of course, forced to go in a circle because it's built into the Ferris wheel. And I guess to be technical, I only gave you one sig fig on my mu, so on a test I would have to call this 3.03 times 10 to the 1 seconds, but 31.4 is fine for here.